Welcome back to another Toyota Land Cruiser video. Today's video, I'm gonna show you guys how I'm wiring up my Eaton E Locker for the front of my Toyota Land Cruiser. This is a 95. First and foremost, I do have dual battery set up. I have the EGR deleted. I have my ABS deleted along with my charcoal canister deleted. So this is gonna be slightly different from your Land Cruiser if you haven't done any of those modifications. <coughs> Since I have those parts deleted, I have much more room on my intake side. Now the, the front differential is located more towards the passenger side. <coughs> so technically if, you, technically, if you wanted to, you should put the wire on that side but i didn't want to put the wires <coughs> on the passenger side because that's where the exhaust is i didn't want any of my wires near the exhaust so that's why i kept it on the intake so if you guys watch my other video overview video where i show you guys the wire harness i already talked about where things go i'm just going to talk about where i'm putting all my wires and where I, how i mounted up on my land cruiser you guys know that the harness is pretty long so this is the main harness <coughs> I have wire loom going down and this is what goes into the differential so this plugs into a differential and for right now we just have this looped up right here the first ground wire <coughs> I, I have it right there that's the original ground for like the other ground wire from my engine so I kept it right there and then the hot wire I have it right here to my first main battery <coughs> this little um, they call it a little circuit breaker whatever the thing is but <laughs> that's battery <laughs> and then that's the hot wire to the other um, to the switches and stuff and then I have my relay I have the relay right on the inner fender and it's held up by one bolt one little 10 mil bolt right there and that 10 mil bolt was already there it was an empty slot so that was a good spot to put it and you can see here it's nice and snug doesn't move around everything's all zip tied these dead plugs are the abs plugs so they're all dead so it's all zip tied right here no moving no shaking um, this is just the dual battery fuses so don't worry about that and then the other thing we have is this wire here is the wire that's yellow this was the yellow wire the signal wire that they call it which is from the main harness to the heart um the wire that goes into the switch so there's only one wire that goes into the floor uh, the the uh the f the firewall here and that's the yellow one now as i mentioned on my other video that yellow wire is super long i want to say it's like at least 15 feet so i did end up trimming that wire down um to the size that i need it and i gave myself about four to five extra feet just in case in the future we need to do anything else but i highly doubt it but that's about it so everything's all nicely wire loomed up nice protected i didn't end up mounting this little block here uh, um, because the screw holes is very hard to get to so i ended up just zip tying it to the main harness so that's really nice and tight so that's pretty much it for the engine bay we'll go ahead and move on to the um interior and i'll show you guys the switch on the interior of the 80 series I have my ditch light. These are the rigid ditch light. And these are my LED round lights in the front. And then I cut this hole here for the locker. Now this switch is really nice because it's not your typical switch. This switch here, you can't press it unless you go down. So you have to press down first. So it's a very nice safety switch. So there's no way you can actually bump this. Now you can mount this one facing up facing down whatever you want i have it facing this way just so that they're very similar and then these this switch here needs to be right here but then i had to move it up here uh, just because it makes more sense so if i want to turn on my led lights i can just press these two like that but we're not worried about that so the hole right here you do have to trim a little bit more like i say it's not perfect but it is what it is as i said earlier <coughs> the switch has three wire that yellow wire which we talked about already and then there's two more wires um a ground wire and a ignition wire that blue wire so uh, i think i still have this <sighs> i still have this unmounted because i'm still waiting for more parts to come in so right here so we talk about the yellow wire the yellow wire is done for and then the ground wire i have the ground wire um the wire white you have right behind here and i have the ground wire right here I'm not sure if this is a good ground, but we'll find out once we get it rolling. Like I said, I don't have my, I don't have the locker installed yet. This is all metal, so I think this should be a good ground. 
and then we'll have my ignition wire so this is the last word i haven't got this wire done yet um because like i said earlier i'm still waiting for that um fuse tap the fuse tap that they include is not the big fuse version it's the small version and my fuse right here is the big one so i'm gonna wait for that to come in so right here um, I also deleted my AC system. So my AC system's been deleted, but right in this spot right here, um, that's where the AC fuse is. And the AC fuse is a 10 amp. So I'm just going to go ahead, uh, once I get that tab, I'm going to go ahead and use the AC as my power source for the switch. But that's pretty much it. So once I get that in, and um, once I get my locker installed, we'll go ahead and test it out. And I'll show you guys the aftermath. But for now, that's how I do it. It's really, really simple. Everything's nice and clean, all tucked in. Super, super simple for the 80 series. If you guys got any questions, let me know in the comment section below. I'll catch you guys on the next video.